Greetings, this is August 9th, and we had a fairly calm weekend. Uh, some moisture was in the air, and we'll take a look at the infrared uh, over the last couple days and what's happening today. But first, a notice from the Emergency Operations Center at 778-442-8007. If you need assistance with a livestock emergency plan, uh, you have critters that need a place to stay, or you have a place for livestock to stay, please give the number a call and uh, help some people out or get the help you need. And as I told the deer around here, this does not apply to them, and uh, they'll have to stick with me. One of the first things I want to take a look at was the wind situation. It's going to be drying out again and winds could actually start coming from the north with gusts in the afternoon approaching 30 kilometers an hour, uh, mainly Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, around the White Rock Lake fire zone. But uh, over at the Tremont Creek fire south of Savannah, those wind gusts from the north are supposed to start happening today and uh, they could reach as high as 30 kilometers an hour and then uh, Tuesday and Wednesday they could go as high as 40 kilometers an hour. Uh, winds should shift in the evening and come from the south with breezes that could approach 20 kilometers an hour even though it's night. So daytime winds blow away from the community, nighttime winds blow towards the community. Meanwhile, in the rest of the south-central interior, uh, most winds will be coming from the west and the southwest. We've rolled into a screen from lightningmaps.org. On Saturday, uh, some moisture came through with some cloud cover. There was also lightning on Vancouver Island, north of Courtney, Campbell River, and I noticed some popping up in the Caribou to the west of Hundred Mile House, southwest of Hansville. There was also lightning activity that stretched kind of over the Rockies and Edmonton got a lot of strikes. As well, uh, we can see the electrical activity that went to Saskatchewan, northern Manitoba, and if we zoom out, there were a lot of strikes all over the southern United States, the eastern seaboard. So when we see this, be on the watch for spot fires. They can smolder for a few days and then pop up when uh, conditions dry out and winds come back. Checking this morning on Dry BC's webcams, this is a Monty Creek break check looking south and it actually looks like a fairly clear day out there. We can see some of that yellow smoky tinge on the horizon and we'll jump to that location. This is Spalmachine. We are east of the fire zone, uh, which is on the other side of Okanagan Lake. The White Rock Lake fire is still quite active to the west and it's been pushing the smoke and haze eastwards over Spalmachine, Vernon, Armstrong areas. And if we take a short hop south, this is the webcam looking north from Kalamalka. We can see the haze in the distance, uh, even though points south of this looked as though they have a fairly clear day, uh, blue sky above. It definitely looks like uh, some fresh air has been able to make its way into the Okanagan Valley over the weekend. We're moving now to NASA's firms. This is the Fire Information for Resource Management System. We're looking at satellite imagery from yesterday. Cloud cover was covering most of the southern interior and we're going to take off that backdrop and just put a generic screen and look at the progress over the last few days. So this is August 6 when we had that large breakout on the White Rock Lake fire. Now we're looking at August 7th. It started to rain and things cooled down a bit. August 8th uh, quite cool yesterday, uh, not a lot of infrared showing up throughout the day on both the MODIS and the VIRS, and finally today, August 9th. We are seeing increased activity, the cloud cover is beginning to dissipate. The White Rock Lake fire is still quite volatile, as well as east of Adams Lake in the Momich Lakes area. That is quite active uh, to the north of the Shushwap and then over at Tremont Creek. Uh, that's popping up as well. There are a few random spots out there. We'll concentrate on a couple of these main areas. 
This is Tremont Creek. We're looking south of Savannah Lake at the top of the screen. Uh, zooming in, we can see hot spots within these forested blocks to the south of the lake and to the southwest of the lake. Uh, they have been moving northwards. They're appearing as small clusters or spot fires right at that northern perimeter. And if we look to the wind again, we're looking for a shift to come around 11 a.m. and start blowing from the north, blowing away from the lake. Then in the evening when things cool down, the winds could shift and start blowing from the southwest again. The pattern should repeat Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday there may be another shift that comes from the northeast. Moving south to Lytton, uh, I am seeing one or two hot spots on that southeast flank, uh, south of Spence's Bridge. Uh, it appears to be within the existing perimeter. And near Coquihalla, there's a couple of hot spots still there. That's close to Brookmere, about halfway between Hope and Princeton. Sorry for the background noise. Uh, there is some brush clearing going on and neighbors doing that. It's a good thing. We are now looking at the White Rock Lake fire and we've gone back in time to August 4th. We're going to see the progression again so we can make a comparison with the activity today. This is now August 5th and August 6th when there was that major breakout, Friday. Then Saturday, August 6th, rains came in and infrared was obscured. Then Sunday, August 7th, a lot less infrared appearing on this screen. And finally today, August 9th, Monday, and it becomes apparent where most of this activity is, to the west of Monte Lake, uh, around the Ingram Creek area, south of Westwold, and down in that southeastern corner where the fire perimeter has kind of broken into a southern section and a northern section to the west of Okanagan Lake. We're zooming into the area around Westwold, Monte Creek. We can see that cluster to the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, that's north and south of the Tea Kettle Creek. And then the cluster that's south of Westwold, uh, it's showing up on the lower right-hand portion of the screen. That is around the Ingram Creek area. And here we can see it on the Canadian Wildland Fire Information System. Those hot spots still appear west of Ingram Creek. Uh, they haven't reached Will Creek. And Falkland is over on the far right-hand portion of the screen for reference. According to the scale, those hot spots are approximately three to four kilometers south of Highway 97. We're now looking at the southeast flank of the fire closest to Okanagan Lake. The hot spots are appearing at the top of the hill approximately two kilometers west of west side and highway 97. We're moving slightly north. We can see the top of this flank. It's in a valley. I believe that's Naswido Creek as it extends eastward down to Okanagan Lake. And here we're looking at the Canadian Wildland Fire Information System again. We can see the hot spots. Uh, they're in the creek area and that could be fairly stubborn for wildfire crews if they get into gullies and gulches where there's fuel. We're zooming out looking at windy again. Winds are coming from the southwest at nine kilometers an hour. That could vary during the day and as we can see around the White Rock Lake area winds are fairly calm coming from the southwest. Uh, the forecast breezes will be fairly steady today throughout and into the evening coming from the southwest but then tomorrow winds shift around 11 a.m. come from the north and then in the evening they come from the south again. That shift happens with stronger gusts on Wednesday around 11 a.m. coming from the north northwest and it looks to stay fairly constant from the north northwest for the rest of the week. There could be some variation on Friday uh, winds shifting again coming from the west so We'll have to watch for this if you are uh, anywhere east, northeast, or southeast of these fire zones. You want to have a plan in order and check for the ground reports from BC Wildfire and your district. Uh, links will be in the description below. 
A quick look at the Shushwap. We still see activity uh, east of Adams Lake in that Momich area, and these appear to be drifting eastward. Likewise, east of Shushwap Lake at the north end, that is a perimeter on the north, perimeter on the south, and still very active in large remote forested blocks. And I do see some hotspots that are still hanging on close to the eastern shore of Shushwap Lake. We're going to jump southeastward now. We're looking at the area around Kalsagar, Lower Arrow Lakes, uh, Nelson, Winlaw area. A bit of a good news story here. This is satellite imagery showing moisture content within vegetation over the last couple days. It's showing high positive water values in the vegetation without water stress. And hopefully trees can retain some of this if we do head into a drying trend. So thank you very much for watching. Please make sure that you have a plan. If you're anywhere near these fire zones, you want to know which way the wind is blowing, what is the vegetation and terrain between you and the fire line, what are your access routes, and check with the links below to keep up to date on the situation. And I'll put this emergency operations center number in the description below, just in case you need help with uh, your livestock or uh, you have anything that you can contribute to help these people out. Be safe, everyone, and keep your nose to the breeze.